Hi, hi everybody. We're going to do saxophone day 9 today. Or, or 10 or whatever it is. I don't know anymore. It's been too long. Uh, today we're going to work on sight reading. On how to sight read a piece of music that you've never seen before. Just looking at it first day and reading through it. Okay. Uh, we're not going to look for perfection here. We're just going to look for a little bit more than we had previously. Let me make sure that my camera is straight up and down. It looks, well now it's definitely wonky. Alright, there it is. Now we're straight. Alright, so uh, we're going to use Creepy Crawlies by Michael Story to sight read today. Uh, and uh, I'm going to give myself 20 minutes to do this, 5 minutes for a warm up, and then 15 for uh, to run through it to sight read it. So I'm going to start my warm up now, and then I'll tell you how I'm going to sight read once we get there. So warm up, five minutes starting now. I'm going to warm up on a basic scale. Um, and it's going to be the scale that we are in for the song. So Creepy Crawlies is in the key of E flat concert. That is for us our C scale. Okay? That is no sharps and no flats in our music. Let me pull it up. I thought I had it, but it was actually trumpet. No sharps and no flats in our music, starting on C and ending on C. Okay? So I'm going to play through my scale, and I'm going to do some other warm-ups until the end of this five minutes. So here we go. Okay, start with C. My goodness, that's kind of low. Okay. Easy scale for the saxophone, no weird fingerings, just straight up and down the horn. Let's do that again. two octave C scale pretty easy on saxophone now let's do it in thirds okay do the whole scale in thirds pull my next strap up a little bit <laughs> note we can get to on the horn is our low B. Okay, there it is. Sounds good. I've got about two and a half minutes left. And if I get done with how I before that time's up, that's fine. Let's get our lip slur in. Lip slur is a figuring technique workout. Here we go. I need to slow that down and make sure I can get it in time. Make sure I don't mess up any fingerings. feel pretty warm right now. I feel like I've got myself to a good level of warm-up a didness. 
So now I'm gonna set my ugh, set my timer for 15 minutes, not 15 seconds, 15 minutes, and then we're gonna start sight reading. So we got 15 minutes to sight read this puppy. So every time I sight read, I use the same acronym, okay, to remind myself what to look for. It's stars, S T A R N S. Every single one of those letters stands for a word that we follow. So S, the first one stands for spelled that wrong <laughs> signatures okay I wrote it on a sticky note signatures and we're gonna be our time and our key signatures we already know what our key signature is Lori that's a little high let me pull it now <sighs> we already know what our key signature is we just played it it's C for us concert E flat so we know there's no flats or sharps none time signature is easy as well it's written right at the top four 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 beats per measure and the quarter note gets the beat. So I'm going to write that in E flat and 4 4. I wrote in my time signature and my key signature so that I know what it is and I don't forget. Okay? And if we look through the piece, we see that there is no key change or time change throughout. The next one is tempo. T is for tempo. All we have to do is read at the top moderately bright. Okay? Uh, maybe on your piece it doesn't have written in what the tempo marking is, but it's 116. It's 116 is. Lord, I dropped it and it blew everything up. One sixteen. That's your tempo. Okay. That's what we want to aim at when we get to the end. Doesn't have to be there right now, we just have to get to it eventually. So I'm going to write 116 next to my tempo. I can get my metronome app or my metronome out and I can use it. Okay, we got a signature and our tempo written in. The A stands for accidentals and articulations. Now you might not know what those words are, but I'm going to tell you. Accidentals are any sharp, flat, or natural sign. You can see them right, right here. Sharp, flat, or natural. Uh, that is not in your key. So we only have one in this song. It is in measure 37. Uh, on the fourth beat, we have a C sharp instead of a C. So usually C is here. C sharp would be no fingers on. It's the open note on the saxophone. C sharp. There's your C sharp. So you gotta make sure we play that instead of a C uh, natural. Okay, that's the only accidental in the tune. We circle it, make sure we've got it, and then we don't forget it when we get there. The articulations are anything else that tells you a different way to play the note. So this will be slurs, dots, or accents in this tune. You can see those. Slurs, dots, or accents. The slur, which is the little arch goes over top, it means you don't tongue those notes. If it's got a slur over top, you don't tongue it. The accent looks like this. Uh, means that it is hit harder. Ta, 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 instead of da, da, da. Right, and the dots, just a little dot on top of your note, means you play it nice and short. I'm gonna play um, one of our measures. I'm just gonna play measure one in those three different ways. Uh, slurred first, as written, and then I'm gonna accent it, and then I'm gonna staccato it. So here it is, slurred. <laughs> Okay, that's slurred. I didn't tongue anything except for the first beat. And then accented. Very aggressive, more punch to the notes, and I'm gonna play staccato now. Real short, separated, and uh, really dotted, right? Those are the three different kinds of notes you're gonna play here. So, notice what they are. Look them up if you don't know what they are. Like, Google it, what's the dot on top of the note mean? Uh, and, uh, you can, you can add those accidentals and articulations into your music. I'm just gonna write a dot, accent, and an arch for a slur over top of my stuff. The next one is rhythm. Okay, R stands for rhythm in stars. See, rhythm. Okay, all we're gonna do is look at the hardest rhythms in this tune. Right at the beginning we have a harder rhythm, it's just eighth notes, but we might not know it off the top of our head. Subdivide that. One and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. Because eighth notes we count with a one and two and, right? Moving on. Um, there's really not a whole lot of difficult rhythms here in this tune. At measure 15, we have this.
cool little eighth note section. One, two, three, four. One and two, three, four. So that measure fifth, measure sixteen. One and two, three. Hold that out, right? Same thing at measure eighteen. One and two, three. And then it's pretty much just quarter notes throughout the rest of the song. Okay? Yep, that's it. Those are the only hard parts in the tune. It's a pretty easy song on saxophone. Uh, the hardest part is just this beginning bit and counting and making sure you're in time. So rhythms, I'm just going to give it a check mark so that I know I've looked at the rhythms. Okay? If I really need to look at something, maybe I'll write in a measure number. Me measure 1 I need to check. Measure 16 I need to check. Right? And the last one, the last S, stands for symbols and signs. Okay, symbols and signs are anything else in the music. So a repeat sign or a fermata or um, a dynamic marking change. So your volume markings. Okay, that's what we're going to look at mostly here in this song. We've got a forte at the beginning that means full or loud. Goes to mezzo forte, means medium full, medium loud. Going on, we don't change dynamics often. Back at measure 24, we have a forte again. Uh, and then straight into mezzo forte with a crescendo. Make sure we do that crescendo, get get louder over time to hit that uh, 33 out of the forte. And then we have a thing that says stomp foot. Just stomp your foot on that beat, big X, right? We know where to stomp our foot. Uh, otherwise, we go back to mezzo forte and then to forte. Just circle where the dynamic changes so you know to make those changes. Okay, it's it's really a rather simple song on the saxophone. You don't have some of the harder bits that other other groups do. So I'm just gonna play through each section, make sure that I've got them all right. Um, I'm actually not gonna play through each section. I'm just gonna hit the little hard bits that I might need issue with. So 15, and uh, if I really want to judge myself on my sight reading ability, I don't want to play it yet. I want to just try to clap through it, or maybe just you know finger through it. So let's finger through it. We've got F sharp or F E F E F G F E F E F E D C A B or clap it, you know. Right? It doesn't take much. Like I said, this saxophone piece is pretty simple. We gotta work on our entrances, right? So make sure we know how to count our rests. Every 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 uh, measure of rest has four beats in it because of our because of our time signature. So every single measure needs to have four beats of rest. If you are not playing in it, uh, I really don't think that it's gonna take a whole lot of anything to get this song going. I probably can just read straight through it. So let me just try it. I'm going to take it at tempo. 116, let's see what I got. Okay, there we go. We've got six minutes left. We're going to finish early, I think. One, two, from the top. Two, okay. Two. Here we go. Stop.
tragically easy song on the saxophone. It's really not hard. Um, the hard part in this tune is in the clarinet and flute line. Everything else is just so simple. Um, but there it is. That's Creepy Crawlers for you. We got about five minutes left. So we've I've sight read it pretty well. You probably could too after you did all that work on it. Let's just play it, play it again. Let's see if we can't play it faster, right? Let's play a little faster. But even then, I mean, it's just quarter notes. Um, for me, for right now, just to finish up my five minutes, I'm going to play the trombone part. Just to try to get uh, 15, just try to get a little bit more notes under my skin today. But really, if you can get it after that, then you've got it. And if you didn't nail it that first time, try again. Sight reading um, doesn't have to be perfect the first time. It's not supposed to be. You're supposed to put some time in to learn the song. If it's perfect the first time, then you need to be playing something harder, right? So at 25, I'm just going to play the trombone part. <laughs> That's your, your sight reading lesson. Uh, it probably will take you a little, a little bit longer than it took me, but honestly, this is an easy song. It really is. Uh, the only, really the only hard part here is this opening bit. And once you get this under your fingers, it's just about following along with the group. Um, make sure you play it out, play it loud. Don't be shy with it, but pretty simple tune. Uh, maybe next week I'll have something a little more difficult for us to sight read. But I would uh, follow along with me when I do this stuff. It's all, all the music is online. And uh, get to sight reading. You can sight read out of your yellow book, you know, sight read anything you got. Look stuff up and just read it. Use stars. Have your little sticky note. Take it out. Stick it to your music so that you've got it. Sight reading is not as intimidating as it should, as, it, as you think it is. Just got to put the work in. Uh, I'll see you guys next week for saxophone, whatever's next. See you later. Have a good week.